And in business, there has been a surge in the demand for agricultural food products as farmers grapple to meet demand. Rice is staple food in Nigeria has had a pickup in domestic demand after the borders were closed. Now joining me live to speak on the impact of COVID-19 on staple food supply in Nigeria is Anand Bajatia. He is the CEO at Stallion. Hello, Anand. Hi, good afternoon, Ms. Ayin. How are you? Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, regarding the staple food and you know, the need for food products in Nigeria, the pandemic has raised concerns regarding food security and ensuring that supply meets demand. Now, what have you seen in this regard? Well, see, the pandemic has indeed uh, adversely impacted the food security and the supply demand, you know, despite the best efforts that we are putting in, uh, there is uh, uh, a demand supply gap that is being created because, you know, uh, first of all, the factories cannot run on an optimum cap capacity right now because of a lot, lot of safety measures that you have to put in place of social distancing and other things. At the same time, buyers who can buy, who can afford a buying a lot, you know, and uh, and the sellers who can afford to hold a sell a holding so that they can, you know, in hope of better pricing in the future. So it is creating a bit of a supply demand gap in, in the market. And, uh, and it, is, it is indeed an issue. Now, how has the virus also impacted on consumerism? Oh, it is, uh, you know, we are all... Uh, Finally, uh, it's, a, it's a primal instinct. Everybody is, you know, trying to be in a survivalistic mode and uh, it, we are back to basics, so to say. You know, everybody's trying to, uh, you know, hold as much as they can. They're stocking up and, you know, it's more about stocking staple foods and milk and all. I think the, the luxury spending, the non-essential spending in, has gone for a toss. So it is, it is indeed impacting consumerism a lot. In, in all the ways. So we see a lot of demand in rice, a lot of demand in fish, a lot of demand for food items, but absolutely, let's say, no demand in auto and steel. So it is, it is I think, everybody is trying to just ensure that back to basics, uh, they're all back to basics right now. Now, in terms of farming and processing, has there been any improvement in ensuring the rapid processing and supply meets demand, particularly with staple food like rice? I would like to say yes, Miss Irene, but unfortunately, no. You know, the thing is, uh, with all the things that are going on with the COVID right now, we are very, very careful. When we are running our mills, we are very, very careful running our mill. Run. For example, if I give you our example of the mill in Kano, we have to be very careful how to treat the workers. You know, they are kept in the same mill. They are fed in the same mill. They are not allowed to go outside the mill. And social distancing is being maintained. So, dis so we are not able to run at an optimum capacity because we need to ensure that the safety of our workers is, at, is, is a paramount concern. Then when we come to, you know, the logistic side of it, because of a lot of constraints on cross-border movements and interstate movements and all those things, the logistics also is, is not at its optimum. So it has indeed impacted the way we can cater to the market. Uh, the, the, the entire supply chain is disrupted. Uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, it's, it's, it's much better than what we expected. I, I expected much worse, but I think Nigeria, the people have, have reacted in a very positive manner, but it is not optimum. And, uh, you know, despite best efforts, we are not operating at the best capacity as we can. All right. Thank you very much for your thoughts, Anand. Thank you. Thank Still you, Ms. Ali. Certainly. Still ahead on Plus TV African News is our roundup on entertainment and sports. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 